I'll start here. If there are two certainties in SEC basketball, one of them is that the Southeastern 14 kiss to death is a very real thing. The other is if we say this is a dog slate of games, we get stuff we don't expect. We get great games. We get upsets. Gentlemen, we got all that today. Blake, I'll start with you. What stands out here? Well, listen, our Kentucky fans are coming in. They're having a lot of fun here, um, and they should be. It was a big win for the Cats on the road in Knoxville. And, um, yeah, I mean, but look, there. what did the spread wind up being on this game, Max? Eight and a half or something? It was eight. Yeah, eight, eight and a half. It was wow. bouncing back and forth. Wow. I was surprised it was that hot. I just, I was yeah. running to the to the counter, um, <laughs> to to get me that Kentucky plus eight and a half. Um, you know, I did the emotional hedge as always in Max's pick 'em uh, on Twitter. I went all in on Kentucky times two. We were all in on this one, but yeah, the Southeastern fourteen kiss of death. We said, here's the deal, right? For the first time this season, all of us picked against Kentucky. The general knows. The two dollar super <laughs> chat from the general. He knows. Okay. He knows what was up. All right. I, but it, seriously, I thought about it. I'm like, that's the first time we've all picked against Kentucky this year. We know the Southeastern 14 kids of death is in play here. So, um, again, guys, you can get your super chats in. I mean, what stood out in, in the entire day? I mean, South Carolina goes on the road, ho hum, does it again, the Gamecocks, although we're going to talk about it in a second. Unfortunately for the Gamecocks, hmm. I think their SEC tournament scenario is not one they would have wanted uh, based on how this thing's about to fall. And guys, we will get to the tournament bracket here in just a second. We have the bracket in front of us in the envelope. We're just waiting to reveal it once we know for sure that uh, a couple of these things are going to go the way we think they are. Um, yeah, South Carolina goes on the road, gets a big win. The Vanderbilt Commodores building momentum to finish the season with a victory over the Florida Gators who Max had in the national championship three days ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if he does now, but he had him in three days, three days ago. He had him there. Uh, but man, what do you say about Kentucky? What a performance from the cats. They've been a different team since really, you know, that Gonzaga game. We talked about it. Yeah. They lose the buzzer to LSU. I mean, yeah. Other than that, what has this team done wrong over the past month now? I mean, legitimately, Gonzaga was played February 10th. What has Kentucky done that poorly since then? They've not done a lot of things poorly. They go in and get a win here. Um, Reed Shepard, what do you say? Antonio Reeves, what do you say? I mean, it's just it's the way it, the way it works. Connect, of course, goes for 40, but the Cats, a huge win on the road. So, And what stood out to me about that game was, I mean, obviously the shot making I was just incredible. I mean, just incredible, the shot making that was in this game. Um, but Kentucky won physically. They won physically. I out-rebounded Tennessee at Tennessee. Um, just the the different games they can play with with Diero, Onyenso, all the different big guys that they rotate through. Um, it's valuable, man. It is valuable. Connect with 40. I mean – Listen to this. If you're watching, and I'm not knocking any other conference, but you're watching the Big East, the Big 12, some great basketball being being played, but there are not leagues that have guys at week in, week out, dropping 30s, 40s, 30s, 40s, just trading blows. This league is incredible. That's what I took away from today. Yeah, it, what, what a great – I mean, it, and it started with Arkansas. And I know we're going to get to Tennessee, Kentucky, but that just was a harbinger for the day. And I, I think I'm the one that, that raised my hand like an idiot and said, hey, this is a mismatch. And I think Blake called me out on that. He I was right. You. By the way, what was what was Arkansas doing on that last possession of regulation? I got some oh. questions there. You you sent um, a message to us in the text thread, and you're, the last sentence of that, after you asked that, there was just one word, and you asked you said why with a question mark. And my response was basically, Apply that to anything with Arkansas this entire season. And yeah. you're kind of going to get the same – the same. you could say that same thing about Arkansas this season. So, And if people didn't see the game, here's what happened, okay? Arkansas has led literally the entire game. Alabama did not take a lead until overtime. 
if I'm if I'm correct, and I think I am. Alabama's tied it. Arkansas's got the ball back with almost a full shot clock. You, you got Grant Nelson with four fouls, had him for several minutes. And, and instead of taking the ball to the hole and getting a lower percentage shot or a higher percentage shot, they dribble out the clock and jack up a three. I mean, it just didn't make any sense. If, you, if you're maybe down two and going for the win, I get it. But, yeah, I mean, it just was it was that kind of day. And then, then Kentucky comes into Knoxville where weird things happen in that series on the other team's floor. Uh, Tennessee's played some of its worst basketball, and I'm not taking anything away from Kentucky, but there have been some strange things happen there the last few years. Reed Shepard, you know, Dalton Connect gets 40. He's probably not even player of the game because Reed Shepard was so good. In addition to the scoring, he blocks that big shot at the end uh, in the final minute or so. Uh, Hats off to Kentucky. Their their guards were great. Reeves was really good uh, taking the ball on on drives and and getting some easier buckets inside to loosen things up from the outside where they shot lights out. Uh, So, yeah, I think Reed Reed Shepard is is, is that our player of the day. I think that's a a fair – yeah, I mean, it's it's odd that when a guy gets 40, he's not the player of the game, but – is this to, to, to the victors go the spoils situation? Because it feels like it is to me. Well, I think there were some – There, I mean, listen, there were a ton of 20-plus point scorers. There were a few uh, a few guys in the uh, – for South Carolina, Murray Boyles had six assists, no turnovers. Cooper had five assists, no turnovers. They played crazy good games. I think there, there was a lot around the league, but in terms of uh, height of the game and, and the moment – I think you would have you would give it to Reed, but that game was incredible. Yep, it was. I mean, I think, like we said, it's the same story with Kentucky when they have these kind of games. It's who's it going to be? You know, it's who, who's going to step up this time? And it's you know, most of the years we said Antonio Reeves has been as consistent as maybe any player in the SEC this year. You know, Reed Shepard, in terms of what he contributes, like also been a level of consistency for a freshman, you know, that you don't always get for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just, and there were a lot of players in that game that just made big plays, right? Like even, like I said, I mean, it's even on Yenso, four blocks. I mean, he, the guy, you don't have to score, but like he made some big blocks at the right time and um, all that. So yeah, I mean, it's, you know, We've said, and I keep saying this, and I've said this to people probably multiple times over the past couple of weeks. If I do a radio thing or whatever, I say the same thing. There was a time where, if you remember, there were people wanting us to just count out Kentucky. Probably after the Gonzaga game, I would say, was when everybody yeah. was put just, all right, guys, why are you still talking about Kentucky? Why is Blake still talking about Kentucky? I, know, I was probably the one talking about him the most. But, um, you know, with their defensive issues and all this, I'm like, it's the same thing because – you just are not going to find a lot of teams out there with this kind of talent. And so you can never just completely count them out of anything. And, you know, listen, that I think they were going to maybe play as well as they have played. I didn't think they were going to go to Auburn and win. Um, you know, I thought they'd have a chance to beat Alabama. thought Mississippi State was going to be tough, uh, and it was. thought they would lose this game. And look up, like, the talent has risen to the occasion here. And I just think you look at it, and, man, it's – yeah, like that's why you can never count this team out. Like we've played that game all year. It's like, is Kentucky going to make the Final Four? Is all this stuff? We don't know until we see a bracket. But you can never yeah. say no, they're not because they have the talent to get there. These are the kind of games now they're winning versus earlier they were losing. But if ever, I mean, Kentucky fans, you're in here. What is what is this thing that we say every single year? Like people in the media, all this other stuff. It's always that thing where you're like. When does Kentucky play their best basketball? We've said it about Cal for years and years and years. It is end of February, into March. That is when they're usually playing their best. And so here they are yet again in that same scenario. Now we've just got to see if they turn it into something bigger, which that is the expectation based on what they've accomplished now. Down the stretch, the talent they have, can they turn it into – that next final four, that next national championship type scenario. So, yeah. Well, you guys know that there were seats on this. What have I said about Kentucky all year? Let, let's start judging this team in mid February because yep. of all the youth and things like that. And since mid February, let me pull up the scoreboard here. Uh, boy, the, 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 the very definition of mid February would be that 
February the 13th game against Ole Miss, which Kentucky won by 12 points. Since then, Kentucky has lost once. That was LSU at the buzzer on a little bit of a, a fluke play. Point number two I want to make here, is Kentucky a an outstanding defensive team? No. It gave up 1.09 points per possession today to Tennessee, which under the circumstances is, is probably fair playing on somebody else's home court against what's a really good offensive team. So the defense has been good enough recently. It's not great. I don't know that it's good enough to win a national title, but but it might be good enough to get to the Final Four at the level that the Cats have played defense in the, over the last month. I mean, we've talked about this before. Gary Parrish had a thing, a thing in Matt Norlander of, Okay, what? How bad can your defense be and still make the Final Four? And the answer has been basically, you can have a defense ranked in the low one hundred. I see it. That's fine. I can see in the low one hundred. The general hater. I can. You can get there with the defense like Miami did last year, but it's hard to win games since. Now, look, are they good enough to flip a switch and play better defense? Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, they're they're athletic and talented enough. But I, I thought Tennessee did get some good looks late down the stretch uh, that that they could have hit and just didn't. So there was also that. That's a great quote here from WTK. Like Kyle's gonna start saying, "I like my team soon." Look out! That's when you know. So that's when you want to start looking out. Yeah, I have written down in my notes here. Uh, halftime. I like to look at the box score at halftime. Uh, just to get a feel for for who's play, how who's playing well to start the game and whatnot, the the narrative with Tennessee all year has been the support around Connect. At halftime, James and Vescovy had zero. Vescovy ended with zero. Another one of his kind of games where he doesn't really get going and then doesn't end up playing down the stretch. Only twenty one minutes. Um, so we've been saying. Well, I've been saying actually. Well, they, they proved they don't need to. They did it against Alabama. They've been doing it recently. Um, but, man, when you – we're at the end of the season now. You're going to start playing your best competition. And sometimes 40 from Dalton Connect isn't going to be enough. And that's what's starting to worry me. Um, I know Kentucky played out of their mind and looked like the prime Golden State Warriors. Uh, but what happens when another team does? You know, it just – there's I'm starting to get worried a little bit. No. Yeah. We will find out. Let's quickly get to some of these super chats. I'm not gonna lie to you guys either. You know what's hey, fine? Before the before you get those, I want to ask you one thing. If Kentucky ripped through the field next week in Nashville and won the tournament, which it is fully capable of doing, we know about Kentucky in SEC tournaments. Um, would, would that make you? I guess it's a dumb question because I think I know the answer. Maybe maybe the question is how much more bullish would that make you guys on Kentucky going into the NCAs? I don't care what they do next week. I'm bullish. Yeah, you're fine either way. Okay. I, I don't think there it wasn't a dumb what question. they do next week. I mean, it's yeah. it's important, but I mean, I just I think the the thought that the SEC tournament is the 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 prime indicator of what you're going to do in the NCAA tournament. I, I feel like we just I feel like we haven't necessarily seen that. I mean, I have to go back and look at the results on teams. But... Uh, we've seen it once. Okay. Um, I'm well, thinking of Billy Donovan's once. first national title team where they were, um, well, that was a long time ago. Well, but you said we'd never seen it. That, that was I a didn't, team that no, was I young. did not say we'd never seen it. I just said, okay. I don't know how many times we have seen it. Like, I'm not sure. Like, but you're yeah. telling me one, that's fine. I just mean, but that was a different era, a different time. Like, I don't sure. You're not going to go out to, you know, try to lose, but I, I'm just saying, I, here, let's just make this easy. I don't care what they do next week. I still think Kentucky can get to the Final Four, no matter what they do. If they lose to, let me pull up their bracket here. If well, they're not going to lose that game, well, they're probably going to lose that game either. Well, listen, I'm going to give you a spoiler on what where I want to have Kentucky uh, in my bracket next week, but they got a really good chance to go far. Um, so, yeah, I don't care what they do. I, I'm still high on them. So, same here. I'm gonna. I might have uh, might have jumped the gun there a little bit with Florida. Maybe, um, but no, I really, I, I think this has got to be the most talented team top to bottom. And uh, I said it, man, I don't know how long ago, but um, I like to reference that, uh, that Gonzaga team that made it really far, made it to the championship game. They had, uh, 
Collins coming off the bench, NBA talent, first rounders, lottery picks coming off the bench. When when you have that level of talent, uh, those teams just tend to do well in March. They they just do historically. Uh, yeah, I really like this team. All right, so I was about to we'll get to some super chats real quick because we got quite a few of these. And again, guys, if you want to make sure we get to your comments, we we see them flying through here, but. We're going to miss some of these. Um, if you don't leave a super chat, there's almost 600 people in here. We got a lot of chats coming in. An all timer, perhaps, for a Southeastern 14 live stream. Um, but uh, yeah, keep keep bringing them on in here. Uh, and by the way, guys, I was going to tell you a minute ago. Oh, Southeastern 14 kids. Just wait a super chat. Super chat. Uh, just wait a second. Wait a second. We're not acknowledging that one. You know what's flying around on my desk right now? Ladybug. Oh, the official no. mascot of the Southeastern 14 Kiss of Death is still here, and it came for the Tennessee Volunteers. So, all right, going way back to the beginning. Colts for the Super Bowl. You know, Colts for Super Bowl. I haven't worn my Titan sweatshirt for you in a while. Dollar ninety nine on Super Chat. The Big Blue Nation rep demands at least a two on the power rankings. Spoiler alert. Unless you guys differ, I don't think we're doing power rankings next week. <laughs> What's the point? Like, we know where teams are going to be seated in the SEC tournament. I don't think there's a point. So, thank goodness we don't have to do power rankings anymore. <laughs> Thrilled. <laughs> Kentucky's at two. We'll, we'll give it for you, okay? We're not going to do it, but we'll give it to you. Um, the General with a $5 super chat, adding to the $2 <laughs> one earlier. Chris, go buy a Kentucky shirt. If you see Chris at the SEC tournament, we'll find a Kentucky shirt for him. Um, <laughs> Justin Holland. Wow. Uh, five. Southeast of 14 members she's gifted. We appreciate Thank that. You, Justin, as always. Zachary, also appreciate the super chats. Always dollar ninety nine here. Justin Edwards, Max, huge. First half of that game. Thirty seven minutes is a uh season high. Season high. Thirty seven minutes. Playing his playing his best basketball when they need it the most. I'm telling you. Talent. Yep. This team is loaded with talent. Yeah. Um Justin, five dollar super chat. He wants to fire. A certain Vanderbilt coach and athletic director, uh, the Commodores, with a huge win today. I'm sure there'll be people making lots of comments about what that means for Jerry Stackhouse's future. And, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Chris will be paired with Arkansas next week. Smirk on the base there. He's he's getting another year. I'm almost sure of it, and and maybe a couple. What are you, Vanderbilt uh, fans that are watching, Justin? That, included, that was the most. That? I don't know how how in tune the the general SEC about Jerry Stackhouse skipped Senior Day before the game. Mm. There are photos of him in his office watching. I've seen them watching the festivities from his office, which is up on a balcony there, and I think he did that to avoid being booed. I was and walked off with that's an upset why. win. <laughs> that has to be. And why. they they played somebody in the gym sent me. They played the um when they did introductions. They played the uh the steam cannon or whatever. It made it in the way they they timed it to where it went off right when they announced his name, so that it would sort of um, mm-hmm. muffle the booze. <laughs> that was just <sighs> the craziest thing ever. The coach is so unpopular that he he skips senior day. He gets a big upset, and his and his AD gives him, I guess, a big hug walking off the floor. So, mm, well, Billy, Billy, Billy knows. Yep, uh, Billy knows about the the era. So, yeah. All right. Um, listen, I'm going to put this on the screen. Justin Holland's two dollars super chat here. We're going to take this two dollars and we're going to throw it into the ocean <laughs> because I refuse to use this two dollars towards our <laughs> channel for anything we're not firing dennis gates all right i'm not firing dennis gates so let me just tell you right now i'm, I'm shocked that you put that on the screen i thought it would take more than $10. well i'm encouraging more super chats that are not this just you know filled with vitriol um and of course what happens as soon as the follow-up this guy sends a five dollar super chat to put this <laughs> stuff on the screen oh dear listen sam smith earlier i saw sam's comment somewhere i'm sorry sam i can't find it but Sam was advocating for Stackhouse to be the new head coach at Tennessee and to fire Rick Barnes. So, Tennessee <laughs> fans, you let me know if you're all in on that. Uh, I'm willing to bet that's probably not the case for the majority uh, of, um, you know, the 
the situation. So, by the way, JJ and Pat Paul 2020. Circling the cat's bandwagon and willing to let us get on board. Listen, I've been on board all year. Even when they're giving up 100 points, I've been on board. So, Blake, when do you want to talk about bracket and scenario? And- yeah, we'll get to that here in just a second. Um, so, yeah, we're going to bring up the bracket, bracket folks, and shortly. Um, we got 600 plus of you in here right now. So, if you're waiting around for the bracket, we're going to get to it uh, in just a second. But let's quickly do a, a quick run through and this is again i know it's the regular season finale but we are starting also to kind of look ahead to next week south carolina i want to talk about them for just a second they go on the road and get the overtime victory mississippi state the gamecocks they just do it again <laughs> like this is this is why if people say like going into next week in the in the ncaa tournament why i'm so intrigued by south carolina they are winning big games away from home. And if you can prove you can do that, which Kentucky, as we said, has started doing too. Tennessee just did it at South Carolina. Um, Man, they just, they find ways to win. Like, and for Mississippi State, look out because Kenny Loggins has arrived and you have officially entered the danger zone. (laughs) Yikes. That was bad. What are you talking about? You've never seen the, the gif? Oof. Of the Kenny Log, call Kenny Loggins. You're in the danger zone. Get out of here, Chris. I mean, I've heard the song. It's just cheesy. Yeah, I forgot. You're you're not on the internet very much. Never mind, Chris. Oh, right, about. right, so right. Mm. He's not on the internet very much. I do want to say real quick though, staying on this game, um, you know, South Carolina could go on and on about. I mentioned Murray Boyles and and Talon Cooper, how they combined for 11 assists, no turnovers. They just they play so solid. Um, heck of a win. By South Carolina, and and I've seen the the narrative of uh, South Carolina's you know a fraudulent. They they win these close games, and they're not. What do you want them to do? Go into Mississippi State and blow them out by thirty? Like they they're winning road games and, and tough road games that other teams aren't winning. Uh, so give them their credit. Uh, but real quick, one player that does deserve a bit more credit than has been he's been getting lately, Josh Hubbard. Over the last five games, guys, over the last five games, he's putting up 28.2 points per game, making 5.6 threes per game on 43%. That's insane. That is an insane five-game run for this freshman. Um, so just that was another fantastic game that um, that almost kind of got overshadowed by by the other games today. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to, to highlight those those players on both sides. Well, usually when we explain what it is that makes a team tick, we got our, our Ken Palm page pulled up. We got our burned in memory of all the games we watch. And, and remember, we said this before the season. Uh, for some of you may have seen it, may not. I, I did a whole thing of how many minutes did everybody on the roster play a year ago at other places. And and no team in the league had more minutes well, I think I think when Arkansas got Keon Minifield eligible, Arkansas actually passed South Carolina. But until that happened, South Carolina was number one in guys that play uh, minutes played by its roster at some D one team last year. Now that wasn't necessarily South Carolina, but it was D one teams. And I was just watching them today and saying, this plays like an old team. Like they they are not. They don't shoot the ball better than everybody. They don't rebound the ball than ever, better than everybody. They don't have an eraser underneath. They just play like an old team. And what old teams do, they make plays when it matters. And I think that explains a lot of what Kim Palm probably statistically attributes to luck. And, and right, B.J. Yeah. Mack was the guy today who did it, by the way. And he's an old guy. Love me some well, B.J. Mack. Unfortunately for South Carolina, we're going to pull up the tournament bracket in a minute. Things did not fall in their favor today, despite the the twenty five win season. Um, mm. I, I think just the way the bracket sets up, but we'll we'll get to that shortly. All right, Tough we got draw. some comments coming in, and I know some of you guys have been here the entire time. But Matt, I got to call you out on this. I literally said five minutes ago about <laughs> Antonio Reeves being the most consistent player in the SEC, and we've also <laughs> talked about it previously. Get out of here, Matt! Don't don't you come at us with that. Um, I'm just we love Reed. Matt's great. A regular, yes, he he calls it. He has, he's been, I think he's been the most consistent player. We brought up the stat, what was it, probably last week sometime? 
If you look at the it? numbers, yep, he scored like at least I don't know what it is in like twenty six, twenty eight games at that point, whatever the <laughs> stat was we had. Um, so tremendous, tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Matt, Matt, you're an MVP of the live stream. That was good. Tremendous that was work. Good. You're tremendous. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's get to some other stuff here. Uh, Seven straight appreciate- games of twenty points or more for. Antonio Reeves, yeah, well, if way. you look at the entire season, he scored like – I it's think he scored at two. least 14 or 16 and like 28 of 30 or something. It's uh, not – he's it's had double digits that. in every game, but North Carolina, he had nine in that one. And, and oh, yeah. by the way, they won anyway. Yeah, so tremendous. Uh, we appreciate $1.99 Super Chat. We do appreciate that. Um, I know people were saying earlier we're not talking a lot about Tennessee – I'll be honest. I feel like we talked about we've been the, the the Vol Network over the past two weeks, and I'll be wet and been thrilled about that. But hey, they're the regular season champion, and we'll talk about them in their bracket here in a short short minute. But we appreciate Connie as always, always uh, followed the channel here basically from the start. Two dollar super chat. Cats are talented. Vol still battle. They did Max. I mean, they were like I said. I mean, <laughs> Connect was not going to let them just get blown out, uh, and they were right there and made it a game and had a chance. But yeah, that was just the way it happened. So. Yeah, I don't want to go too too much further in depth breaking down because I'm about to do that when we, when we do the bracket. Um, but pr- pretty much the the difference in the game was the bench scoring. Uh, Kentucky just had so much more of a spark and more options to go to for a consistent offense than than Tennessee. Um, the the difference was four points. And you know, how many heat checks do you think Dalton Connect shot today? It, a bunch. You know, like I I, I love him. He's the best shooter I've seen since Buddy Heald. Uh, but, man, I felt like there were a lot of possessions that were heat-checked that that could have been resulting in a better shot. Um, but, geez, nonetheless, both teams are Final Four contenders. What what was the game where they did that, where it felt like they all just sat around and watched him take shots and nobody else was really making a play? And they lost that game. South Carolina. And then, and then South they, Carolina game. And, might have been, and then they came back, and it was a much more balanced scoring effort for the next few games. I feel like that's what that'll do. That'll just reset some things a little bit. I, I don't have – my concern level over Tennessee is, I don't know, one on a scale of one to ten. Oh, no, I'm not worried at all. I think both these teams can go to the Final Four. Uh, I was just we're, – we're splitting hairs breaking down the game. Yeah, we are. So, By the way, guys. We got 700 of you in here. Tremendous. You guys are outstanding. Um, that's a record this year for Southeastern 14. I know you're all excited for the tournament next week in Nashville. And by the way, I'm going to drop something in the uh, chat here for you guys. So we just set up a, a sub stack. I'm sure you've heard of sub stacks before and all this other stuff. We're going to start putting a little um, article slash information slash Max's betting advice of the century all this other stuff. We're going to start throwing this on the sub stack. So do us a favor. Um, throw your email in here and uh, give it a try. You might have to copy and paste it. I don't think you can link in the, the YouTube thing. But do us a favor. Um, sign up for our sub. It's free. It's just a free thing where all we do is, look, you're going to get your videos here, notifications on YouTube. But you can also start <laughs> seeing us in in your inbox um, as well. So do us a favor, sign up for that sub stack. We got a lot of fun stuff in the works, uh, written wise. So that way, you know, you don't always have to be glued to the YouTube just to watch us. You can get our information and stuff that we use for games. Uh, when we talk about them, obviously don't, don't take everything we use for the Kentucky Tennessee game, but, um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun in March and obviously in the football off season in the next season, baseball, all that. So do us a favor, sign up for our sub stack. We appreciate it. Um, but think about this also. Today I gave out Josiah Jordan James over seven and a half points. Let me tell oh. you, I've never had a more two electric free throws than those two <laughs> James free throws with about 30 seconds left. I was screaming. So, yeah, a bunch of fun stuff planned. You were. All right. Let me just try to right, – we got a lot of Super Chats. So we're going to – again, guys, if you want to make sure we get to it um, – Super chat, super chat, super chat, because we got a lot of these, and we're going to try to hit them all, but we're about to get to the tournament bracket in a second. And we will tie in some of the results from today when we talk about the tournament bracket, okay? For example, Florida losing to Vanderbilt, we might have to have a state of the union on the Gators when we talk about their seeding in the SEC tournament. But, all right, we'll get to that in a second. Let me see what I've missed here. Justin, of course. 
Um, five dollar super chat. The Mount Rushmore of O and eighteen coaches: Bryce, Drew, Dennis <laughs> Gates. Who else? <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're really something, Justin. Uh, this five dollars, poof, out the window. Um, did, did you, know you guys listen to um, to Parrish and Norlander much? Not not a ton, but I do I do like those guys a lot. They had a thing this week of of coaches who had gone winless in conference play and also won a national championship, and there were like four of them. Yeah, well, get ready, get ready. And, and one of them was Kelvin Sampson, like Kelvin back at his first job in some obscure league. But it's it's crazy. Hey, there there are I, like I wouldn't have thought there were any of them, but there were multiple. All right, we're we're not going to go deep into this. I'm about to no, get to the not. next super chat. But I was thinking about this earlier, and you just said a name that I think I would put at the top of my list. Who is the best coach in college basketball today? Jeez, that's a tough question, but... Give me a top three. Bill Self. Bill Self. Um, Kelvin Sampson. And... Would you put Hurley up there? Mm-hmm. Got to be, right? I think I might. Hurley. I'd say Hurley. Hurley's offense is incredible. I just want to make sure everybody had Kelvin Sampson on there because sure. I think that yeah. guy, I just can't even say enough good things about how good of a coach I think he is. But um, all right, we won't get sidetracked on that. Okay, we still got a lot of super chats we got to get to here. So. <laughs> Justin, I have no idea if we put this up, but thank you for gifting five more Southeastern 14 memberships. Um, all right, Chris, we're not going to get bogged down on this, but this is an interesting question. Elton asks, $1.99 in Super Chat, Kentucky move up to a two seed? Uh, I would have to give that a look. I think it would involve North Carolina losing tonight. Kansas got blown to smithereens today. That helps. Blown. What happened in the Big 12? I didn't see what happened with Iowa State and Baylor and – because Creighton won, and so that doesn't help. Iowa State laid an egg also. To who? Kansas State. I, I think it's too much. No, no, look, maybe if they run the table next week in the SEC and, and kill everybody. Although, I mean, it feels like last year well, what that. you did in the weekend didn't matter in in conference tournaments, at least to the committee. At least it didn't in the SEC. So I, I think unless – I don't know. I, I I don't know that there's enough time left for Kentucky to move up to a two, but I, that's not final answer. I'd have to look. I'd have to reshuffle that a little bit after today and see what other teams did. Yeah, we'll but I, but it feels it. it feels like a stretch. All right. Um, by the way, shout out to Hog Barbecue, who's back. Um, Hog Barbecue, it's good to see you. I know we hadn't got a chance to talk to you much this year because it's probably not been the most exciting year for an Arkansas basketball fan. But hopefully, you get a little. A little momentum here going into the final stretch next week in, in Nashville. But always uh, enjoy the discussion. And he also brings up something here we're about to get to. If it works out, I like Arkansas spot in the tournament. Well, hmm. you may not be the only one when we talk about it here in a second. Uh, all right, so we've got this. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to move through this. If you want to quickly hit on anything from A&M Ole Miss, if you want, and then we'll work through the Super Chats and get to the bracket. You're not going to make me do that, are you? Well, I know you don't have a lot to say. That's why I want to bring it <laughs> no, up. I know it'll be quick. That was the point. So I'm just, I mean, we we, we said it in the preview. A uh, and M physically with the rebounding, Ole Miss has been one of the worst rebounding teams nationally all year. Uh, and man, this one was, this one was, like sometimes the, they'll make it close with the rebounding. This was, uh, you, you could call it cops for for how bad it was. Uh, there was a crime scene on the floor. I think it was a plus 29 rebounding margin. So that was the, that was the story of the game. Uh, there's not much more anal- analysis than that. Did you guys notice how disinterested Ole Miss looked on defense today? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. There was, I don't there get was it. No heart. Did you see what Chris Beard said after the game? Oh, he, he said, said let's that, give refunds. Yep. He said, anyone that paid money to come see this game today, I'd like for you to get reimbursed. That that just can he do that? I don't know, but that's what he thought about his team's performance. Wow. I wonder if a coach has ever done that. Has anyone ever officially gotten refunds for thousands of people in attendance? I have no. We'll clue. see. We'll see. 
Look into that, Max. Let me know. I got it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, Justin, two dollars super chat. We know. We we saw this earlier. That was laughed at a few minutes ago, I guess. Um, can you super chat via email in the two dollars super chat? No, you can't. But you can send us money. You can you can donate to the Substack. Like you can. Um, you can send money. And it looks like we already got some notifications in. So you guys are already signing up. So we appreciate that. Again, sign up because we're gonna have a lot of stuff that you're not gonna be able to see you know, on here, we're going to have some different stuff on the Substack. So do us a favor, sign up on there. Um, it's just like reading your favorite website, except we may be your new favorite website. Um, hey, what one quick note on yeah. A&M Ole Miss, because I don't know how much time we're going to spend there. Uh, the, the return of Henry Coleman today. What was up with that, Max? Didn't play much, but he played nine minutes. Have you ever uh, ridden on a carousel before, blindfolded with your hands tied behind your back? Because that's what I feel like I am doing when I try to find Texas A&M injury news. I have no, no clue, Chris. No clue. We've what's been going here on. before. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, who? What, what other games have we not talked? Have we not even mentioned today? Have we mentioned all the others? Um, is Auburn final yet? What's the deal on that? I don't have it in front of me. Auburn is up 14 with a minute 44 to play. All yeah. right, so it's final. Auburn, right. congratulations on your victory. We're going to talk about you in a second in terms of the bracket. Um, LSU, Missouri, trust me. I got that one on four TVs, given the stakes involved. <laughs> um, by the way, shout out to Connie. Gives out five Thank Southeastern 14 memberships. Tremendous stuff. Thank you. From Connie. Uh, and finally, we worked through the Super Chats. Justin, bottom three coaches. Stackhouse, get, I, we're, I, listen, you're not doing that to me. No. I'm not. I'm, no. Absolutely not. Get out of here. Leave some more Super Chat money before you go. Um, all right. What if you look at it's this time. bracket? I'm dying. I'm dying. It's time. Let's get I'm to dying. the bracket. You guys have been waiting on the bracket. Let's get to it. Now, the chances of me getting this right, as we know, you got a 50-50 shot. Um, so, don't hold me to this, but... I need you guys to stall for about 30 seconds while I get this thing on the screen. Well, while you're pulling it up, I can give you the the first four. Um, you've got 12 seed Georgia against 13 seed Vandy, followed by 11 Arkansas and 14 Missouri. Well, Chris, there is where you are, I think, incorrect. <laughs> yeah, I think so. We're off to a rousing start here. <laughs> I think Georgia. Well, wait a minute. I thought I thought Arkansas beat Georgia. They split. They split, right? Oh, there was another game in there. Okay. Well, um, I they think. Split. Didn't they? They, Did they, they split? split. And then Georgia's okay, got but the they beat over South Carolina. They did split. Yes. Don't. Gosh, Chris, you already met. Like, I've been, I've been over here like trying to think well, about Georgia's this for right. an hour. Georgia is I right. I think I've got it right. Okay. So just give me a second to pull this up. Um, Georgia is 11, you're telling me. Georgia's 11. We're going to explain why in a second. All right, Hang I'll on. resign. Yeah, you're because out of they here. Got that, they have the win over South Carolina. It's that they have the highest seeded win, which breaks the tie break. Um, okay, hold on. When which did they? Be who? Texas Everybody wanted me to highlight this comment, so I will. Wait, wait, um, say that again? No. Chris, you are confusing the heck out of me. Who are we right, talking Chris, about? No more. Stop. Here's the bracket. About Arkansas, Don't say Kentucky. anything, please. We're done here. No more. Here's the bracket. Okay. Let's just, <sighs> here it is. All right. So let me just quickly set this up for you guys. So there's no confusion. Max, can we pull the, um, what's the thing at the bottom? Can we pull yeah, that? Yeah, from the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. Tennessee's obviously the one. Okay. Now, with Auburn's victory, everyone knows what we get, correct? <laughs> that means we get the final four way tie per second. So here's what happens in that scenario. You get like just the unbelievable who plays everybody, what's the record and all that. So why does Kentucky get the two? Because Kentucky had a, I think, two and one record against the other three teams. Got it? Okay. Alabama, I think, had a two and two record against the other teams. Auburn, I think, also had a two and two record against the other teams. South Carolina had a one and two record against the other two teams. Or three teams. Sorry, I know I've been saying two. Three teams. Take it. Um, so that's why South Carolina moves to the five. All right? That's why Kentucky locks up the two because they have the better percentage. It's not the number of wins against the other opponents. It's the best percentage. Kentucky two and one. Auburn and Alabama two and two. South Carolina one and two. There you go. 
How do you split the Alabama Auburn thing in there? What is it, Max? It goes to the. Why am I uh, not thinking about this? Um, Alabama Auburn. Yeah, so it goes to Florida. Yeah, you go all the way down to Florida. Alabama beat Florida. Auburn did not. I know did Alabama not. lost right. to Florida, but they do have a victory. That's how that plays out. So there's your top five, and that's how. Uh, again, I, I'm fairly certain this is correct. I Max think and so. I went too. through this multiple times. Okay, Texas A&M as the seven. So let me find this. Um, they're the Texas A&M is nine and nine. Even if LSU wins, Texas A&M holds the tiebreaker because of why? They beat Tennessee. Tennessee. the number one team. Yep. So A&M is your seven no matter what LSU does tonight. Ole Miss is your 10 no matter what Ole Miss does to, or excuse me, no matter what LSU does tonight. Um, because Ole Miss is what? Um, seven and 11. Georgia's going to lose. Boom. There you go. So they're going to be the only team at seven and 11. That's why you're going to get the rematch, Texas A&M and Ole Miss. My goodness. Um, Can't Matt's wait. asking, does this require calculus? Yes, it does. Eight, nine. If LSU beats Missouri, LSU is the eight. If LSU loses to Missouri, LSU is the nine. So you're looking at this, no matter what, LSU and Mississippi State are playing in the second round. So you can just flip the seeds. No matter what, that's what's going to happen. So now let's get to the, the Chris portion, the Wednesday night showdowns. So... Georgia is the 11 because they did split head-to-head. Georgia has the better win because they beat who, Max? Why am I just blanking? Georgia? South Carolina. It's because Georgia beat South Carolina. South Carolina. Arkansas beat Kentucky. No, they didn't. When? No, they didn't. Last year? In my imagination. Two years ago? Get him out of here, Max. Take him <laughs> off the screen. Send him the timeout. Oh, my this is goodness. an all-timer, isn't it? <laughs> you got to get Why Kentucky did I have fans. That in my head? No, hold on a second. Kentucky fans, we have 800 people in the chat, in the in this <laughs> stream right now. 800. A, a season record for Southeastern 14. You guys, you bring it at Chris right now, okay? I, I don't know. Hold Give me the all-time series mm-hmm. history against Arkansas. Give me something here. Uh, even Brett, who's not a Kentucky fan, is calling Chris <laughs> out. <laughs> so, Georgia with the better win because they beat South Carolina. It was a long time South ago, Carolina. but they beat them. All right. So, <laughs> that's the first game of the year, wasn't it, in the SEC? I think it's Close first or second. It? I think it's maybe second. I don't remember. I um, second. So, I'm not a total so, loss here. There you go. So, that's how you're going to get Georgia, Missouri, Arkansas, Vanderbilt. Um, again, obviously, even if Missouri wins, they're the 14, doesn't matter. Vanderbilt's the 13, no matter what. So your Wednesday night games are set. Um, again, the other stuff is pretty much set too. It's just a matter of, is LSU going to be the eight or the nine? Mississippi State going to be the eight or the nine? So and that, that, and that <laughs> doesn't matter. At Chris. Uh, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways. Sometimes you just say something so stupid, you have no choice but to laugh at yourself. You know what? This is perfect, though, because here's uh, Chris's thinking. Just because Kentucky gave up 102 points doesn't mean they lost the game. They still won the game because they scored hey, 111. To, to, to be fair, I feel like the way Kentucky and Arkansas have played this year, that could have reasonably happened, but it didn't. Well, the first game was ugly, but the second game was entertaining. <laughs> The second game like was very the tiebreaker anywhere. But the, no. Sorry, it doesn't uh, – you don't – Chris, I'm sorry. We don't see the SEC tournament based on defensive efficiency. So, I apologize. Uh, That's not how it works. Um, even then, I still think Kentucky is better defensively in, from an efficiency standpoint than Arkansas. But um, don't hold me to that. So, Looking okay. at this, who, who do you think has a, a, a good setup, bad setup? Kentucky. <laughs> Done. All I, right. I'm sorry, but I think it's Kentucky. Um, oh, and I'm wow. not just saying that because yeah. a bunch of Kentucky fans are in this no, chat. No, yeah, I agree. So I think yeah, the, Alabama the Florida rematch. On that side. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I, I think I think Tennessee and Auburn feel like a, a couple teams you want to stay away from, and they're not in Kentucky's half of the bracket at all. We just saw what Kentucky – did against Alabama. 
here's I, I don't want to give away my picks yet because we're going to do our our picks on Monday. I think, but well, I, I would give it. <laughs> never mind. I would give it away. <laughs> Sorry, I, I would give it away. Sorry, I don't want to do it. Um, I think Alabama got screwed. I'll say that. Oh, they. I I said this morning on the Alabama pregame show, Ooh. talking to to Hunter. I said, I know you feel the same way, but. If you're Alabama, if there's one team you just want to stay as far away as possible, is Florida. And now they're going to get Florida. And then if they get past them, they get Kentucky. If they get past them, they get a South Carolina, Auburn, or Tennessee. I mean, that's mm. they got to win three tough, tough games. Uh, yeah, I think they got the hardest draw. Yeah. I think South Carolina is <laughs> – I just – I hate their spot. I just hate it because yeah. you're sandwiched in between Auburn ah. and a red hot Arkansas team who red I know hot. lost today, but I, I'm still calling them red hot because they're red playing hot. as well as they have all season. So, yeah. And Vanderbilt just beat Florida. Yeah. So I almost think that the 13 and the 12 are better than the 14 and the 11, both of them. Like if we're power ranking them right now. I mean, Vanderbilt just beat Florida and Arkansas is playing their best basketball. You don't want to run into either of them if you're if you're going to play a bottom four team. You don't want to play those two right now. Yeah. Actually, hold on a second. Wait a minute. I I knew there was a chance. What is South Carolina's they beat Kentucky? Oh geez. Okay. So all right, Max, do the math. This is South Carolina tremendous. also beat Tennessee, which is the one. No, but it hold on. It's the three way tiebreaker between the teams. It's not the, the tiebreaker the between. Okay. It's not so Tennessee is not included. So right. it's the tiebreaker uh, unless between the it, teams. Unless it's tied at that point, and then it goes to Tennessee. Correct. So South Carolina. Okay. Gosh, y'all, you guys scared me. They lost to Auburn. They lost to Alabama. They beat Kentucky. Right. Yeah. So that's one and two. Correct. One and two. Okay. Sorry. Yes. This, this is this is why I know we should wait until this thing comes out. But I can't on. wait. We love this stuff. We're not waiting. Yeah. Until like I remember one point. year we were trying to break like a five or six way tie, like with with one or two games left. It was crazy. Yeah. I think I, yeah. I think that's the point at which I gave up trying to do these ahead of time. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Um. We'll see if we get this right. If not, then you guys can just laugh at us in the comments. Yeah. It is what it is. You're going to see the official bracket anyways. So just look at this as another prediction from Southeastern 14, meaning you got about a 25% chance of us getting it right. So look at it that way. Um, so, yeah. Anything else, Max, that stands out here? Uh, I was just – I was looking at the 8-9, and, and and I know they're going to get – they're going to get Tennessee, um, but – and it's not going to be in Starkville, but Mississippi State did beat Tennessee already this year. You know, I doubt I doubt Tennessee is going to be uh, very happy if they see Mississippi State, a team they've already lost to in the first round, as the one seed. You know, so there's there's some interesting stuff. There's some interesting stuff. Also, uh, Kentucky they might see Texas A and M in their first game. Another team that beat them. Now this thing this thing looks. We say, oh, this team's got a good path. I like them. This thing might be nuts. Think about what's on the line for Mississippi State, too. Like, they have to beat LSU. And then it's like, if they beat Tennessee, they're 100% in oh, the Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. But they have to beat LSU. Like, there's no other question. They cannot lose that game. So, I think they should be scared if they do. So. A lot of interesting uh, storylines, both both tournament bubble rematches. I like this bracket. I like it. All right. I, I'm like, I want to pull the bracket off the screen because I'm like, there's no I'm way. Looking, I'm looking right. at it on my half screen. I'm still looking at the bracket. There's no way we got this right, but I think we did. Max and I put some work into this, so... I've tinkered so this. long on this on these seedings in this bracket. I don't know who's who anymore. Well, 
it's it's interesting. Um, we got a couple super chats from earlier. Shout out to Justin, and we always have fun with Justin. But he's had to watch the UFC. What are you doing? Come on, come on. Oh, he's give me give me one second. This is March. What are you what are you doing? Hey, question question for the room here. Um, did what what did A and M's win today do to change or not change its bubble status? Because I have not dug into that one. Oh, I'm not sure not already in. updated anything after the games, or uh, he may have, but they're still not in. Okay. Um, I don't know how they could be. All they did was beat a a team that's also not in on the road, so I don't. I can't imagine that did a whole lot for their. But right? it, would that I mean, be? Uh, would that still be a quad one win? I don't know. I mean, it's on the road. Ole Miss is probably top seventy five or close to it. I'm sorry. Might, might have knocked don't. Ole Miss out of the 75 it was in. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to turn over all the rocks here. I mean, look, here's the problem. You're a bubble team. It's not just what you do. It's what everybody else around you does. Right. And, and that, that's why I asked the, the question. Next. I don't know what 80. else happened today. 80. With, like, the Big East. and Okay. 80. So that would be a quad two. So I don't think it does any. I mean, it does something for A&M. It doesn't eliminate them. But. I think they still got work to do in the SEC tournament, and they got to play Ole Miss again now. So I don't know what that's going to do for them, you know. It, and then they got to play Kentucky. So it's like, mm, I don't know. Oh. There we go, Justin. You said you were going to watch UFC. What? Oh, Max and I are hitting the button. I'm trying to. I'm trying to show it. <laughs> <laughs> I have another. I have another shirt and another sweatshirt. I have three O'Malley things. I love that guy. You may even get Max's UFC bets in the uh, in the Substack. So sign up early. If, you, if you're just jumping in, if you didn't hear the thing we said earlier, sign up for our Substack. If you want us in written form, you want to get like our information. You got you know you hear us bring up like stats and all sorts of stuff. We're gonna start putting that in our our Substack. I'm gonna put it in the link in the comments. Copy and paste it. I don't think you can actually click on it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start putting a lot of information in there, especially for the tournament and stuff that could come in handy. Go straight to your inbox. You don't have to seek it out. You don't have to go search in Google for a website. Right to your inbox. Straight from us. We're not going to email you 100 times a day, but um, sign up for it. It's free. Um, there you go. Had to throw this up. We've mentioned this before. Yeah. One the narrative around them. How different it would be. Jordan if, uh, Wright makes that crazy play of the ball going out of bounds, throws it right to a guy who throws it in just in the nick of time that's the difference in the title and not here we go if you're just jumping in too uh we did we have talked about every game uh from saturday except for auburn and georgia which i just we'll talk about in a second maybe before we wrap up but um we did talk about kentucky tennessee for a while but this is a good question from anthony five dollar super chat the way kentucky's defense played today can they make a run in the final four i've already given you my answer i think it's yes yes so yep yeah yep um Matt, I know this isn't a super chat, but uh, talk about a Deuce Sierra. We'll talk about it. I think he's better than – he's playing better than Trey Mitchell. I'll just come out and say it. I don't know if that's a that's a hot take or not, but I just – I like the I like the physicality when when a dude's on the on the floor. Guys, Bill, I've said it – I don't know how many times I said Thierro should be playing linebacker in the NFL. I like, I like his physicality. And it's just another piece. I mean, how many times have we said with this with this Kentucky team, well, they didn't have DJ Wagner. Well, they didn't have a Duthier. Well, they didn't have blah, blah, blah. Now when they're all healthy and together, I mean, they're rolling. So you got to remember that also. You know, there's been talk that Kentucky is better without Mitchell just because his defense isn't fantastic. And in the game since he's been back, remember he had two injuries that really surfaced at the end of – January, and he came back for a little bit in February, but not really for long. Played 21 minutes in that Ole Miss game. Since he came back March 2nd, he's played 16, 12, and 7. So he is less a part of what they are doing. No, yeah. Big Z's got a lot to do with that. He provides a little bit of rim protection inside and some other dimensions on the offensive end that Mitchell doesn't. But they're fascinating just because – yeah. Any given night, and if you've not heard this, I compare them to a baseball team with platoon options. Yep. 
where just depending on the matchup, I, I don't think there's another team in this league anywhere like them in terms of roster composition and what they might or might not do night in, night out. It's the depth of physicality. that That's the difference. They have yeah. – I don't know how many how... – yeah, I mean, exactly. So I said it earlier. You said it earlier, Max. Like that was the, yeah. the physicality. They were more physical, mm. and that's surprising. I mean, yeah. So for Tennessee, especially a team playing against them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Listen, guys. There's 800 of you in here. Again, this is a record for us this season. We appreciate Man. you guys. We really. I know there are a lot of Kentucky fans. I'm sure wanting to chime in on the on the big win, but I know there are other fan bases too. It's not just one here we always have a lot of you guys uh in here and again we've had such i mean it's been so much fun this season and this thing i mean now we're to the most exciting part like now we're to the good stuff like just i mean this is incredible so do us a favor if you're in here we ask one thing of you just hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you're not already that really helps us out here at the channel um so yeah hitting that like button um it, it yeah it, it means a lot for us um helps us get found all that kind of stuff so we appreciate it Guys, looking at the screen right now, Tennessee 1, Kentucky 3, Alabama, Auburn 4s, South Carolina 5, Florida 6, Mississippi State 7, A&M on the bubble. That's according to Joe Lenardi. Mississippi State is a 7? Tonight. Are you sure about that? There's no chance. That what I, I mean, I'm, I was reading it off the screen. I could have read it wrong, but that's <laughs> There's crazy. There's no chance they're a 7. Not a shot in the world. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm they guessing are the last they got four the graphic buys. wrong. That's incorrect, yeah. And the Florida's of, not a six after today either, either, I no. wouldn't think. That's, that's as of that yesterday right. morning, Mississippi State was the sixth to last team in the field. So that's what I had them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah strike strike that. I think somebody in the graphics department um at ESPN got that one wrong because that, that just doesn't make huh. any sense. We, we know how that works. We, well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You still hold that against me? No, we're not talking about <laughs> no. you. We're not talking no. about you. Max, <laughs> we, we were going to have some fun with it, and that was our opportunity. Max had yeah. some fun on Twitter today. Um, oh, I missed that. Listen, that's I'm good. doing my best to get up, get these clips up, and I've got three TVs in front of me. I'm whizzing around, and then I see the game ends, and I'm like, oh, I got to get it up quick, and oh, disaster. Harvard today. fans. All over, Max. Me, Max. Come on, Max. I get into this. <laughs> It's March. I in this vortex of March, Saturday man. games. It's March. Um, by the way, shout out to Christopher here. Yeah. Um, even if we end up messing up the bracket, we, we all right, I appreciate that. Um, because again, there is a good chance that I probably messed it up. But me and Max have been talking like all day trying to work on this bracket, and I yeah. think we've got it figured out. So hope for the best, guys. Um, when we see how this plays out. But um, also I'm sure someone else is quite a mess. real quick. Um. Blake, you were just talking about some stuff we got coming up. My, one of my favorite things we did all year, guys, was our midseason awards live stream. I had a ton of fun with that. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow night, doing our awards. Mm. Kentucky Big fans. Show. Big show. How much money are you going to pay us in Super Chats if we vote Antonio Reeves as the player of the year in the SEC? Oh. We accept bribes here at Southeast. I'm willing to take in the I got it. I got a question about that, though. Is, is Antonio Reeves the best player on his team? Okay. I like Reed Shepard. I really do. And they are, and I listen, I said this last week. I said, in any other year, if you took like the top five or six SEC yeah. player of the year candidates and you put them in another season, multiple of those guys are winning the award on their own. But this yeah. is the problem this year is that there's a Dalton Connect, there's Broom, there's Sears, which I know Alabama kind of struggling down the stretch that made it that would probably affect Sears for some people uh but it is an individual award and so uh, yeah I mean I'm just saying so you you were yeah. always a go with the score first guy and when I'm in doubt I'm I'm at a, I like my guys to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that when it's close and that's so where you're you saying the guy who players. has scored at least 14 or 16 points in 29 of his 30 games this season oh, 31 games we're just gonna throw you were, that. You were so disrespectful to Reed Shepard. Let's just. I am just not. Call what, yes, you are. Just, we're gonna be here okay, all night. So hold on a second. I'm disrespectful to Reed Shepard because I would vote Antonio Reeves as a possibility for SEC Player of the Year over Reed Shepard. That's being okay, disrespectful. Well, Antonio Two Reeves guys in the had top 27, six or seven in the league. <laughs> Judge Judy. 
Johnson. And Tony Max Reeves had 27 out. points today. Do you know who else had 27 yeah. points? Reed Shepard. So we're picking you know it just had on today. Rebounds? Reed Shepard. Do you know who also had five assists? Reed Shepard. Do you know how the biggest block of the game? Reed Shepard. Do you know who's going to be the president of the United States this season? Game. That's my point. Next okay. president of the United game. States. All right. Reed Shepard. Okay. There's a lot of good players on Kentucky. I think that's just what we, we have to say. Yeah, Chris. It, 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 it's not disrespect if you choose one Kentucky player over the other. This team is loaded, as we've disrespect. talked about for an hour. I have nothing against Reed Shepard. I would pick Antonio Reeves in the scenario. If I'm – if you had to tell me that I could pick either one or the other for SEC Player of the Year, I would pick Antonio Reeves. If that is just, if that is hateful, tell Jeff Shepard to come on the Super Chat, <laughs> and I will tell him how much I think his son is fantastic at basketball. I just happen to pick Antonio Reeves as a Player of the Year candidate. So, um, there you go. Here, we'll pull up this from, from Alex just to give Chris... Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Look, all right. Everybody's coming in. Great. Go for it. You guys go all in on this. I have nothing. I have no problem with it. So, um, there you go. So, who are you voting for president? Reed Shepard or Antonio Reeves? Who are we voting that. for bully ball player of the year? That's what wow, I am. That's a big award. Listen, that's a big we award. Have, this is a huge award. We have specific criteria. We want high foul committed rates. We want low three-point attempt rates. We want low free throw percentages. And then an overall aura of intimidation. Those are the four criteria for, for Bully Ball. We're going to do a Bully Ball Player of the Year and then a first team all Bully Ball. I'm excited for it. Yeah. There you go. And this is who's going to be the representative for Bully Ball. <laughs> Wow. What? <laughs> Brett's just having yeah, a good Sam time. Walters would be the opposite of bully ball. <laughs> no Sam Walters actually shot a two today. And Brett's hit it. Just, Brett just hates everybody. Hates Antonio hate Reeves. Everybody. Hates Sam Walters. I mean, he just, man, this guy. Um, also, shout out to Elton. He sent this earlier. Um, we watched a lot of SEC media coverage. Very underrated we are. Thank I you. didn't say that. He said that. Um, we appreciate that. We really do. Again, I know we got, again, this is a record. I mean, if we get about 100 more people in here, we're going to hit 1,000, and that will easily be a live stream record for the season. Um, so, Big Blue Nation representing here tonight on the live stream. And, again, if you want to join us tomorrow night, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be doing our live show. I know the Oscars are tomorrow. Let's be honest. Do you want to watch the Oscars, or do you yeah. want to watch the SEC Basketball Regular Season Awards here at Southeastern 14? I think it's an easy choice. But I may be a little biased um, there. Um, anyway, we could come up so. with uh, with Oscar Oscar categories for awards, Max. We'll let you do hey, that. listen. I'm gonna have a. A I'm bringing a bag actor. of tricks. I'm bringing a bag of tricks. I'm giving out awards you would never think of. Listen, Oscars they mean nothing to me. You know why? Because I'm gonna tell you a movie that got just screwed out of an Oscar nomination this year: The Iron Claw, the story of the Von Erichs. For you professional <laughs> wrestling fans out there, go watch the Iron Claw. I got Zach Efron in there. Um, who else is in there? I know there's 800 of you in here. I know some of you have seen the Iron Claw. Don't tell me you haven't. If you're a Kentucky fan, you haven't seen the Iron Claw. Are you kidding me? The Claw. Come on. Works perfectly with your mascot. So, yeah. Anyways. Enough Oscar By the way, talk. I was going <laughs> to... Let's bring this up from Todd earlier. I would say oh, the super chat or this chat. Probably a oh, more. God. You guys At one point, record. we were going to keep up with that, and then we <laughs> lost track no. and did not. No chance. I'm probably glad know, we didn't. Todd. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't keep up. <laughs> I Look, we probably didn't do that bad, but we missed on some games, I'd say. Um, we missed on some games. Uh, I think it's safe to say. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when you're, when you're trying to predict every single game from the entire season, you're going to miss some. You're going to miss a few. We definitely did that. Um, I think down the stretch, though, we got a little, we, we, we tightened up a little bit. Started, Blake and I started recognizing our spots, as we like to call them. Found a few of those. Picked a few underdog winners. Lost a few double-digit favorites. It happens. Had fun doing and some it. Some of us also continued to 
to believe in our father, Lamont Paris. And some of us did not. Um, just for the record. Lamont Paris, I got you. I got you. What do I, listen, I'm going to tell you one award tomorrow night. It's not even going to be a debate. So, spoiler yep. alert. Yeah. Man, 25 wins. How about that for the Gamecocks this season? You want to talk about it? Todd asked our, what was our predictions record? Uh, a big offer on South Carolina uh, in the Ooh. preseason. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, gosh. Tater tot. We will. We'll keep on picking against them. First time this year, we've all picked against Kentucky. So if you guys want it, we'll just keep picking against them the rest of the way. You see the power of the Southeastern 14 kids of death. So there you go. I did say, though, I, re- I, I mentioned the Texas A&M Alabama game last year and how when Alabama locked it up and then had to play Texas A&M last game, they just kind of laid an egg. I'm not saying Tennessee laid an egg, but nine, eight point favorite lose outright. Well, let, let's recall, we went over that in the preview, and I said it felt like a letdown spot for Tennessee, except for the fact that for Tennessee is playing for a one seed in the NCAA tournament. I just didn't think – not not that, like, I, I don't – I can't recall a time this year where I just said Tennessee didn't show up. I mean, the, the games they've lost, Tennessee just got beat. Yeah, the, the weird the, – the one weird game was that A&M game, which I still yep. can't explain. But other than that, I mean, it's like losing to Purdue and North Carolina and teams that are to hunt for the one line in, in a lot of cases. I just thought in that spot, playing at home with with the team that's one of the I, – I thought it would come down to defense and Tennessee's just been better on that end. And I just thought the spot with, with Tennessee playing for a, a number one in the NCAAs, I thought it lessened the, the shot of a let, and I don't. I don't think it was a letdown today. I think Kentucky just played really well. I was going to say that. I don't know. I don't know how many teams in the country were going to beat Kentucky the way they played tonight. You know, so it, it felt it like every time they needed a bucket, and you gave Reed Shepard a little bit of a crack, he he just stepped up and drilled a shot. Bang! Yeah, Bang. it was it was a crazy game. Bang! Bang! Reed Shepard, SEC Player of the Year. In Bang. In everyone's mind. All right, guys. So I can give you confirmation. I just got the SEC. It, our, our bracket. Max. Max, come on. Are we right? Come on, Max. Like, through the screen. Did we get it right? People want to see this. By come we, on. I mean you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Bang. Now I'm going to be blurry for an hour. Bang. That's what I would say to this bracket right here. We got it, everybody. I think this is correct. So <laughs> I'm still not going to give you 100% certainty, but I'm – Almost 100% certain we got this. Um, so I here it is. So I think so. If you're just jumping in, this is your SEC tournament bracket uh, with the caveat, no matter what LSU, I think, in Mississippi State, all they would do is change seeds, they would I flip. believe. But that's yep. it. That's the only scenario that would change. So they're going to play each other. Um, and so here's your bracket right here. And, uh, yeah. So um, there's Get your, your futures in. Get those futures. Hey, who's coming to Nashville next week? In the Super Chat, if you're coming to yeah. Nashville, Yes. For the SEC tournament. Let us know if you're coming. Are you going to be there? Are you going to throw stuff at us? Please don't, but we will be there. And let us know if you're coming to Nashville for the SEC tournament um, next week. Kentucky fans in here, I know a lot of you are coming next week. Now, in Tennessee fans, there's going to be a lot of blue, going to be a lot of orange next week in Nashville. I can guarantee you that. So. The best part about next week is we find out whether Max is really a bot or not. <laughs> I want to tell him about how I, I thought Blake was like 6'6". How about this? Max, we're having this discussion yesterday. And Max literally thought I was like 6'4", 6'6". And Max is <laughs> giving not. me his height. I'm like, Max, I am the same height as you are, man. Um, you thought I was this giant. Uh, so, But Chris, meanwhile, Chris is 6'10". I mean, you guys knew that. So you'll be able to spot Chris like a foot. <laughs> walking through. <laughs> uh, yeah, Justin, all 17 Vandy fans are coming. Well, that's fine. Um, yeah, but anyways. Um, all right, well, look, I would love to stay on here and see what happens with the, the LSU-Missouri game, given what, you know, you guys know I got a lot riding on that one, but um, we're just not going to probably, so – now that we know the tournament bracket, we know what's settled. Um, yeah, here it is, guys. I mean, this is what we've been playing for right here. 
next week in Nashville, an SEC tournament title on the line. And again, if you're going to come to Nashville, give us a give us a shout. Um, you'll see us down there watching the games. Chris will have his Kentucky shirt on. Everybody will be happy. So. I'm going to give everybody two challenges. If if you're there, we will be on press row. So if we're within your earshot, yell at us and say hello. Number two, we got over 800 people here tonight in the the live stream, which is a record for the channel. Let's see if we can get a thousand tomorrow night for the awards show. That might be asking a lot because know. it's not a game night. But I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> it's going to get hostile in there tomorrow night. I don't know if we want a thousand in there. A bit ambitious. Oof. <laughs> gonna get hostile, Chris. I'm telling you. Ooh. Are you guys dressing for the occasion? No. You didn't order your what? tux? Blank. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't. I know Chris is going to. I know Chris has something he's going to wear, and I know what it is. I know he'll be ready. So I'll be ready. He'll be ready. Well, now um, I'll, I'll, I'll do something. Is Dennis Gates going to snap the streak? Probably not after I said it, but Max, I'm just saying he's up. He's up four with five minutes left in the first half. I mean, at some point, well, we're running out of some points, but anyway, just going to throw that out there in case you're listening later and it happened, which it probably won't. Blake, Blake. just busted me. Instead of listening to Chris, listen to low pro grow here. Smash the like button if you're an SEC fan. Do us a favor. All 800 of you in here, um, hit the like button before you head out. And, again, um, what a fun season it's been. We're just getting heated up here. We'll have full coverage of the SEC tournament next week. We don't know our schedule just yet on that, but we will let you guys know. Um, We'll make our predictions for the tournament ahead of time, and then we'll do our usual game-by-game predictions once we see how it's unfolding each day. Um, with all that, and again, our awards show tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Central, correct, guys, I believe? Is that what we're doing? I um, believe so. I think that's right. So, yep. That's yeah, what I have. Listen, turn your notifications on. You'll figure it out. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that, and we'll hand out our Donovan Award, too. I'm sure we'll have a, an award for Donovan somewhere along yep. the way. Um, so, yeah. I'm bringing a lot of awards. I'm bringing a lot. Max got a lot. I do. Reach Public service announcement. Chris has, Time change, so. by the way, overnight. <laughs> Just to let the folks know. You're very, very kind, Chris. Yep. All, All right. right. Well, there you go. What a day. What a day. Awards, 8 Central Sunday night. Um, stuff from the tournament next week. Don't know what that's going to look like, but we'll have something. Going to gonna try to keep an eye on the brackets get all that stuff together depending time it's uh it's baseball season here so i'm doing double duty trying to keep an eye on sec baseball we'll have something on that with power rankings monday morning all kinds of stuff like, here football yeah, here and there sorry what's that <laughs> i heard power rankings i was thinking oh no like in that flashback i'm like no we're not doing power rankings we're doing well, we, we will do season. them for baseball you're welcome baseball. to sorry participate yeah. if you like but i have a feeling you want so Yes, uh, thank you for watching and listening. For Blake Lovell and Max Barr, I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14 presented by Bet Online.